So here recently, I brought a little bit of a twist to the fragrance buying guide format here on the channel. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, a buying guide video is where I take a fragrance line, say for example, Armani Code, and I go through each flanker in the video and break it down, tell you how it smells, how it performs, and that sort of thing. And ultimately, it acts as a guide to help you make a more informed purchase if you're wanting to dive into one of the fragrances or a handful of them, but you don't know where to start. Because when you have a bunch of them out there, which a lot of these brands now have a ton of flankers, it could be a little bit confusing. I've covered a lot of the big uh, designer fragrance lines so far. Still many more to go, but uh, for the most part, I've got all the big ones down. And so what I ended up doing recently was I took a different approach and I covered all of the Creed Aventus clones, and I made a buying guide video based off of that. Not focusing on one brand, a multitude of different brands, clone brands and designer brands, and I ranked them based off of performance. So at the end of the day, you don't need to sit through a video going over the smell of each clone because they all smell like Aventus, right? The whole goal of that video was to ultimately break it down and give you the best performing ones so you can make your decision based off of that because there are a ton of fragrances out there that smell like Aventus, but only so many that maybe perform somewhat like it. Today we're gonna to do a similar thing, but with blue fragrances, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through 10 of the most popular in production, best-selling blue fragrances right now on the market, and I'm gonna rank them based off of performance, 10 being the least performing, and number one being the most or best performing. Now I've got four disclaimers that I need to run through really, really quick, and then we'll get going. First of all, uh, performance is gonna be subjective. What may perform good on me may perform horribly on you, or vice versa. I've seen it go both ways, and so there's always going to be that wiggle room, right? Something may not work on your skin like it works on mine, so these will need to be taken with a grain of salt, but they will give you a nice starting point. Second one being that I'm only doing um, this video based off of in production releases. So and as an example, uh, Bulgari Aqua Atlantique could have made it into the top three of this video. It's a strong scent, but because it's not in production and because the prices are going crazy, I'm not featuring anything like that. Now the third disclaimer is going to be that there's going to be flankers here in this video. And so what I've ended up doing was I ended up choosing the best uh, flanker, the best performing flanker of that line, so long as it still smells like a blue fragrance, if that makes sense. And the final disclaimer is that performance is going to be taking into consideration projection and longevity. I'm looking at a balance of both of those. Some flankers out there may perform or last a really long time but not project as much. That would count against it. So I'm looking for the best balance of both in each of these listings here, and this is what I came up with. Links will be down below, uh, deals on the community tab, giveaways over there, you know all that stuff, but we got a lot to cover. So let's get it kicked off with number 10, Ferragamo Womo urban feel. So you don't hear a whole lot about this, but I do think it is really good. And for the price, honestly, you can't really go wrong with it here. Now this one has bergamot, ambroxan, and ozonic notes here. Um, so about $40 on discounters, nice entry level price, entry level blue scent. Um, it's gonna be all about the ambroxan. That's what is a blue fragrance at the end of the day. It's all about the ambroxan. I've done a lot of videos on it. Um, so if you kinda wanna know more in depth about what makes a blue fragrance a blue fragrance, uh, I've talked about it before. I don't wanna get into the weeds of that here in this video. So it does have that ambroxan, of course, but it also has this kind of uh, ozonic accord, which makes it a little bit airy, and it's a little bit of a different twist on this DNA. Now, performance here, longevity-wise, is gonna be at about that six-hour mark, and pretty decent projection off the skin in the warm weather. Uh, ultimately, it's one of the lesser performing ones, hence why it's down at the bottom of the list, but for the price, it's, it's decent to have around, and a little bit of a different take as well. At number nine, we have Salvatore Ferragamo, Aqua Essenziale Blue. So this one here is another affordable one, about the same price point actually as the other Ferragamo that we just went over. Um, Ferragamo puts out some amazing affordable scents and this one is going to be a little bit more of a mature take on your blue fragrance. So Ambroxan, of course, it's gotta be there. But then also some aromatics like Clary Sage, a little bit of a watery note. I think it really smells nice and it's gonna be a little bit more upscale and a little bit less youthful overall. Uh, this one, about the same, six hours, maybe a little bit more longevity-wise and projection. It's decent, but not a beast. You know, it, it does enough to get the job done, and, and for a situation where you don't need monster performance, it's great, but still on the lower side. At number eight, we have Prada, 
Lunarosa carbon. So don't be deceived by this one just because it's not a blue bottle. This essentially is taking after your Sauvage DNA and it's a very popular one, you know, hence why it's going to be in this video. People love carbon and a lot of people love carbon over Sauvage because of the fact that it is more smooth. So you don't have as much of that brash, harsh, bergamot and, and even the way the ambroxan comes across and the black pepper sauvage itself is very peppery and, and bright and strong much more smooth and a little bit more sweet here with this one there's coal and metallic notes ambroxan of course a lot of lavender very aromatic here this one on my skin longevity wise is around seven hours or so within that range give or take a little bit depending on the the conditions and that sort of thing and projection actually is a little bit softer uh the heat will help it but ultimately this one is lesser performing compared to Sauvage itself and just a lot of the others on the market that being said the quality is unparalleled at the price point it's smooth it's a really nice one to have it just isn't a beast up to number seven we have Chanel blue to Chanel this is going to be the parfum so getting into a flanker here um, I guess Luna Rosa was a flanker as well but again that was the only blue fragrance flanker right aside from ocean which you know it's a little bit of a different take I guess it could have been in here but Ultimately, with Blue de Chanel, you've got, of course, the Eau de Toilette. Everybody knows it. You have the Eau de Parfum. And out of the flankers, on me, the Parfum is the best performing, and the Parfum still maintains that blue fragrance DNA. So this one has lemon zest up top, which is kind of unique. You still get some of that kind of grapefruit, some of that woody, birchy smell, a bunch of amber in here, the ambroxan, amber wood, just that style of thing. Still blue, but a very classy blue and even more refined and upscale than the Eau de Parfum and for that matter, the Eau de Toilette. Now, the longevity is going to be significantly improved on this Parfum version over something like the Eau de Parfum. You know, typically Parfums will have better longevity. Then that begs the question about projection. And the projection is still pretty solid, especially in the heat. Your blue fragrances, while they can be worn year round, they typically do appreciate a little bit of a, a warmer climate. And so that's typically when I wear them the most and I wear my heavy stuff in the wintertime. So get some heat on it and it will push out pretty good. On my skin, Skin, I expect to see usually around eight hours or so and that's off of longevity here pretty consistently sometimes I'll get lucky and it'll creep up to nine now at that point it will be softer so do keep that in mind uh, the further up you go in your longevity uh, hours the closer and closer it'll get to the skin and it will start to fade off that being said significantly better and more consistent than a lot of the other uh, flankers here I've seen where a lot of people tend to only get six hours or so out of the EDT and even the EDP. And, and for me, sometimes it'll be around that, maybe seven, sometimes with the EDP. So the Parfum tends to work the best on me. At number six, a niche one, this is gonna be the only niche fragrance on this list, Parfums de Marly Sedley. So I really am a big fan of this one. It's got mint, it's got bergamot, lavender, ambroxan, and a whole bunch of notes. It's very, very typical. The note breakdown will not shock you. However, not for nothing, uh, this one is actually different. And um, while there will be for sure some redundance between some of the other flankers in here um, and fragrances, I guess, for that matter, redundance between them being that maybe they smell almost a little bit too similar, I find that Sedley really puts itself aside. And I do like that about this one. It's got this minty green smell that really none of the others have. It's a little bit of a different approach, but again, still relying heavily on the ambroxan and, and just that DNA overall, which does kind of throw it in that blue fragrance category. On my skin, I usually get around eight plus hours. So this one here, a plus sign, being that usually I can get a bit over it uh, compared to Blue de Chanel Parfum where it is kind of a harder line there at eight, sometimes a little bit over. This one, eight, it could be nine, eight and a half, somewhere around in there. I've seen where some people get 10 hours out of it and I've also gotten pretty close to that in the summertime, uh, not so much consistently at that, but for me at a consistent uh, measure of performance here, longevity, eight is a safe number eight eight plus a little bit more and so for that with how light this dna is i really can't complain this one is significantly lighter and fresher than a lot of the other stronger heavier blue fragrances in this video this is fresher than blue de chanel parfum it's fresher than some of the others up here in the top three and so just because it doesn't perform as good as some of those others keep in mind this is lighter and a little bit more uplifting 
easier to wear in the summer heat. It makes sense that some of these others are stronger because they are actually sweeter. Breaking into the top five, okay, we have Polo Deep Blue Parfum, very important. Deep Blue Parfum, uh, True Ambrox and Blue Fragrance, whereas Polo Blue Parfum is, you know, obviously blue. It's a, a shower gel, clean, fresh scent, but by today's standards, not really a blue fragrance because it doesn't have a boatload of Ambroxan pumped into it. So this is where you get that Ambroxan kick, that blue fragrance jam going on. Now, this one has sea notes, mango, and Ambroxan. A little bit of a different take and a little bit sweeter, again, like I was talking about there. Now, this one for me is a nine plus hour scent. It's a really good performer and that, that sweetness and that heaviness that this one kind of brings on to a slight extent really helps it along and, and just gives you a bit more performance, longevity, and also strong projection with this one as well. Uh, significantly stronger than uh, some of the others down towards the bottom of the list. And it, it really surprised me as well when I got this one in and I was testing it. Longevity didn't surprise me so much. I figured it would do good given that just how it's kind of uh, constructed here, but the projection is impressively strong. Okay, now I'll go ahead and issue another disclaimer here. <laughs> We're getting into the top four. This top four really gets close, okay? So don't take these with so much weight like, oh, you know, uh, the number one is so much stronger than the number two and the number two is so much stronger than the number three and down to number four. That's really not how it is. You get to this level here and you're splitting hairs because there's no scientific way to test performance, right? And the further a fragrance goes, the longer it lasts, the kind of harder it can get to really pinpoint it and track it down, right? Because we're getting into some, some heavy hitters here up next. So really, Realistically, just telling you this right now, if you're after the strongest blue fragrances in production on the market, go with any of these top four and you're going to be set. It just all comes down to which one you like the smell of best at this point, but they're all very strong. So top four, Rasasi Havas, getting it kicked off with this nice plum, bergamot, and watery scent. Ton of ambroxan, ambergris in here, whatever you want to call it. It's ambroxan, but they like to say it's ambergris, so that's cool. It's the Invictus Aqua 2016 DNA, right? You guys are familiar with that. Maybe you wore that back in the day and they discontinued it. Well, this is what you should get now because this is where it started. And personally, as much as I love 2016 Aqua, I think I like this better. The fruitiness is, is brought to light more and is better quality as well. This one here on my scant is a 12 plus hour scent. It really is. 11, 12 hours, sometimes beyond that. No problems. Even in the highest of heat, when I'm sweating and that sort of thing, this stuff sticks around and it projects like crazy. Now, if you're doing a, a ton of swimming or, or a ton of sweating or something like that, you know, you could start to kind of wash it away and that sort of thing. But for the most part, in a relatively controlled environment in the summertime, this stuff just goes and goes and goes. It's crazy. And when this pops up on discounters, it really isn't all that expensive either. Great stuff. Number three, Versace Dylan Blue. So this one here has amber, ambroxan, whatever, bergamot, incense, and a little bit of a aquatic sea note basically deal going on as well. Some patchouli also. So this one is going to be out of this whole video, probably the sweetest blue fragrance. Now there's one more coming up that has a sweetness to it, but this one's even heavier with that incense. It's actually a slight bit smoky. And the way this has always been described is it's almost like it combines, you know, a, a Dior Sauvage with Aqua de Joe Profumo is how people have called it. And to some extent I can see that, but it's, it's sweeter than both of those, but still has a fresh balance to it with the bergamot and that sort of thing. I actually really, really like this a lot. I love Dylan Blue. I love my blue fragrances, you guys know that. But even though this one is one of the more affordable ones on discounters, mid $40 range, 100 mil, and you can get a giant 200 mil for like 65, so 20 extra bucks and you've got double the amount, which is really solid. Um, more affordable, but still one of the better ones. And again, a 12 hour beast, 12 plus hours. It's no joke. It tends to have a little bit more staying power on skin and it can with hand and it can withstand the kind of uh, washing, so to speak, sweating more, swimming more, it kind of sticks on longer than that. So ultimately this stuff is just nothing short of a beast mode scent and very affordable. Okay, at number two, Dior Sauvage. This is gonna be the Eau de Parfum. So 
again, this is kind of what I need to break down. The eau de toilette is very strong, right? Uh, people will bring up reformulation and that sort of thing. So that's just something you got to keep in mind. You, you, really, you just don't know unless you test it for yourself, I suppose. Um, so get a sample, I suppose, if you're going to be worried about the reformulation. And now you go to the parfum. Okay, the parfum is going to have really good longevity, but the projection is going to be stunted. So you kind of have to be careful with that. The eau de parfum is the middle ground of having that good longevity and the good projection. Now, Sauvage Elixir is stronger than all of these, but I don't consider Sauvage Elixir to be a blue fragrance. Definitely not in the traditional sense. I mean, that is all about nutmeg and sandalwood and cinnamon and licorice. It's very sweet, so not really a blue scent. Uh, again, though it is stronger than all of these um, but that's not what we're after here so if you want to play it as safe as possible you want to pick up a sauvage blue fragrance and you want to be the strongest give the eau de parfum a shot i say sample all of them you know the edt edp and parfum and then pick which one performs best based off of your skin but the eau de parfum is a great starting point Again, that one's a 12 plus hour scent on my skin, very strong. So is the Parfum, and even the EDT can get up there as well. But again, the Parfum, lesser projection, the EDP, stronger projection, still with that 12 plus hour performance. Like I said, splitting hairs, these are all very strong here in this top four. Which brings me to the number one, YSLY EDP. Now, again, a flanker, way stronger than the EDT, way stronger than Live, way stronger than Eau Fresh, and the new Le Parfum is very strong as well. Longevity is its its strong point. Projection is a little bit lesser in the Le Parfum. So as the most well-rounded, best performer, taking both into consideration, both categories, the EDP takes it. And that's nice because the EDP slightly edges the Parfum out in terms of pricing on discounters, not by a whole lot, but enough to make it you know, a, a better choice if you're kind of trying to save a little bit of money. So this one has apple, it has sage, amber wood, ambroxan, whatever. It's gonna be sweeter as well, but again, not in the same type of sweetness um, as Dylan Blue, which is smokier. This one's fruitier and sweeter, so just different, but still gonna be in the sweeter direction. Be careful with it in the summer heat. It will warm up, it could become cloying, but if you limit your sprays and you're in a climate controlled environment, it's not gonna give you any trouble. And again, 12 plus hours is just easy work for this stuff consistently. I mean, it's crazy strong and only had to know to parfum. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for me. 10 of the strongest, best performing blue fragrances ranked by performance, obviously. A nice little buying guide here for you if you're wanting to get into one, but you're taking performance seriously. Links will be down below. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.